thanks for tuning in. This is Optibotomus coming to you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Combiner Wars Deluxe Class Decepticon Off-Road. Now, this is the one that is the Decepticon version of Alpha Bravo. He's not really what we know of when we think of Menasaur. They replaced Wild Rider, much like they replaced the Slingshot with the uh, Combiner Wars Aerial Bots, with Off-Road here. And it's created a little bit of controversy. But I think it looks pretty cool. And uh, packaging-wise, it's much like a lot of those other uh, Wave 2 figures in terms that the clamshell here wraps around and protects the comic. Now, I do not know if the uh, comic touches on off-road or anything, but I'll find out, uh, obviously, here in a little bit. But you got the Transformers logo, Generations. Really cool art here in the back. All these new Wave 2 figures actually come with the comics and not the actual uh, collector card that we got in the first wave, which was just a bit of a, a timing issue from what I've gathered. They didn't have the, the comics done by the time that the figures were released. For off-road here, you see that he transforms in 10 steps. You've got the various characters here in terms of the Stunticons and how they form to become Menasaur. And then at the top says, the newest member of the Stunticons is pressed into action on missions his teammates want no part of, giving him the opportunity to show off his extreme conditions combat training. It's dirty work in the most dangerous situations, but it's the only way that he'll win his teammates' trust. So I dig it. I think it's really cool. And I, I mean, it may play into the actual uh, Combiner Wars comics that's currently going on through IDW. I don't read them, so I'm not 100% sure. Everybody tells me to read them. I just eh, don't ever get around to it. But uh, for the packaging, that's about it for it. So without further ado, let's get this guy open and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have Off-Road open up and out of its packaging. And much like the other uh, deluxe figures from uh, Wave 2, we get the comic book. And I don't know, he's kind of weird looking. I don't, I don't know. It's it's kind of weird, uh, but you flip through, and then on the back or on the inside cover here, it says that, where's it at? It's down here. It says that this is Combiner Wars number 6, uh, at least in terms of the figures and stuff like that. And then you flip through, you got some good art. Oh, there's Prowl. You got Shockwave in there. You got a big, oh, I don't know what's what's going on back here. Oh, you you got Devastator? Okay, but the coolest part, again, with all of these is the, the design page here, and then obviously the back, but the design thing is really neat. You got a sketch phase, you got the gray model phase, and then you got the finished product, as well as a few uh, sketches right here, which, interestingly enough, if you zoom in, I'm going to try to get that in there. You got that picture right there. That kind of looks like Ironhide. That's not no, Off-Road's head right there. That's not Off-Road's head. Kind of looks like it's Ironhide's head. Something along those lines. Uh, and we do know that we are getting an Ironhide figure, and uh, that might indicate that this is going to be a repaint into Ironhide. Uh, then on the back here, you've got his, his color layout. And then on the back here, this is actually really neat. Now, it talks about how Off-Road is the newest member of the Stunticons, and that he's basically a necessary evil for the Stunticons to combine into the Menasaur. But then you come down here, and it says the Decepticon Off-Road was handpicked by Motor master to replace a fallen stunticon the other teammates have been slow to accept him mainly since he was instantly at ease in his new role even worse why has he chosen to emulate the colors of the fallen stunticon is that tribute or sacrilege only the decepticon off-road knows for sure so i dig that i like that and i like how they actually reference that he's meant to replace wild rider and that he also even stole the wild rider's colors so I dig that. I think that's really very cool that they incorporate that. Makes me wonder if they're going to do something like that similarly with the, the future release comic book for Alpha Bravo because Alpha Bravo replaces Slingshot to complete the rest of the aerial bots. But here we have Off-Road, and again, uh, the instructions do not touch on this, but you got a little tab right here, and then you got a little slot in the middle of his uh, fingers that you can bring that in. And if you wedge it properly, you can get him storing his weapon. And I, I kind of dig that. I'm, I'm also wondering if you do something like this, maybe if you rotate. No, you can't really rotate that down. Uh, if you had something like this, maybe you could get a back cab section. If they're going to use this as Ironhide, maybe you could put something there, you know, to fully extend across or something like that to kind of give him that more Ironhide-y kind of look. We'll see, but that, I mean, that, that is an option. And I like the detail on here. It looks like an engine and things like that, but you can have it as a foot. You can have it as a hand. For me, uh, Off-Road replaces Wild Rider, so he basically is also going to be uh, the leg for Menasaur. Uh, but you do have that. And then you also do have this little axe with a nice silver paint right on there. You got a little tab right there that if you wanted to, you can peg right there. I, I don't know why you want to, but we'll put that over there. 
But again, taking a look at the G1 version of, well, Wild Rider, uh, you can see very similar color. I mean, this is probably the closest of all the stunts of content in terms of the coloring. And then you can see that the red windows are carried over, much like the original one had. One thing that I also do like is, you can, I don't know how well that's going to come across, but you can see that this section right here is actually a different color than the parts around. I mean, it's meant to kind of resemble what this looks like here. And I think they do a good job with it. You got the Decepticon logo here on the side. It's very subtle, but you can definitely see it. And I, I really do dig it. Uh, now, he does have some nice silver paint. He also has the silver paint on the inside brake, uh, disc brakes thing. And then obviously just because he's not a low riding car, he's got a lot more clearance for rolling purposes and things like that. So you do have that aspect. Now, like I said, he is meant to replace the Wild Rider, but we have seen uh, show up in Toys R Us systems that they are going to be doing a Wild Rider figure. Now, what that actually is going to be, we're not 100% sure. It's very similar to how they say that we're getting Slung Shot released uh, via Hasbro. And it's basically, it's, it's appearing that that's going to be a Toys R Us exclusive. Now, Slung Shot we know is going to be a repaint of a Firefly. I'm not 100% sure what they're going to repaint uh, to give us a Wild Rider. I think they might do with Dead End. I I'm not 100% sure, but we'll see when it comes down to it. But I do like this. And I think it's neat. You got some nice silver paint right on here. Uh, I may like this a little bit more as Ironhide. I'm not 100% sure just yet, but it's still really very cool. Now, like I said, Wild Rider has always been a leg to me, so that's what I'm going to use off-road as. And to do that, you just take this, kind of fold this out. This guy actually utilizes some of the same the engineering that the aerial bots use, as well as some of the Stunticons. I mean, you can kind of see that with this top section right here, kind of folding back, and then the legs. But uh, so the official transformation for his leg mode is this. Uh, you can probably angle this up a little bit more just to kind of fill that in. Uh, but I, I, like you could see, I mean, he never bent his leg like that for me. I mean, so it was always him bending his leg forward. It was kind of goofy. So this is how I choose to uh, use him as a leg. I think it just looks cooler as a better overall appearance, I personally think. But you can put it any way you want. It can go this way. You can rotate that around if you wanted to use it like that for the foot but again you can see it doesn't have a, a much stability so leaving that on the back it actually gives it a little bit more of a stable kind of standing right there so i do dig it like this personal preference but again to go back to his vehicle mode boom that's it that's that's all you do to transform them uh, you can see like i was saying before this is kind of similar to how the other stunticons are it's not very uh, like a straight copy or anything like that but i mean it's it's fairly similar and then you come down here and these legs really do have a very similar aerial bot feel you just rotate his head around i'm gonna bring these out this is going to angle all the way up like so, kind of push that up like that. You can angle these. These are actually on little hinges that you can flail out if, if you want to. And then this, you can see these just angle down. You got the little tab right here, and then you fold this up, line this section up right here, push that in place, and then you have his leg. So yeah, very much like all the other aerial bots, which is kind of neat that they're incorporating all the same kind of engineering and giving us different kind of looks for it. But when you're done, there you have off-road in his robot mode. And honestly, one thing that's kind of weird about this is that based on the head sculpt, I get a very kind of dreadwing sort of feel for him. And you, you take a look at it, and he kind of has that look in terms of his head sculpt. And it's not bad or anything. It's just, it's kind of weird. Uh, he's got this really kind of funky looking smirk almost on him which is really neat now uh, like i said he's not wild rider and he's not going to be wild rider for a lot of people despite the fact that he's the same color as him uh, you know but in all honesty i don't mind him all that much i think it's kind of cool and based on the story that they give us and how he's kind of replacing the, a fallen stunticon and things like that i kind of dig it actually maybe even a, a little bit more than actually alpha bravo uh but i i do like him i think he's is a cool looking figure i mean you got this big giant backpack sort of thing right here and uh, if we go by the the image on the design thing we could get an iron hide out of this which i i really don't know how it would come across as iron hide maybe it's just i can't envision it based on the colors or anything but speaking of colors the paint on here uh, again is really very nicely done i mean you got these little almost lightning bolt things here on the side which i didn't touch on in the, in the actual robot mode but you can still see them in the face very nicely painted no light piping on any of these figures but you got this 
nice neon yellowish green kind of face. You got red eyes. You got these little uh, teal highlights here for the crest on his head and his forehead. Got some nice red right up in there. And then even though the pin right actually here kind of looks cool as part of the, the, the deco almost. I mean, I, I really do dig it. You got the red, like I said, you got the Decepticon logo printed on the red on this side. And then you got some nice silver down here. I, I do wish that some of the extra silver that or detail that was is down here on his shins and everything were painted silver just to pull that out a little bit more but i think it looks good nonetheless now it, it's a bad comparison but getting this out here um this is really rough because of how old it is uh, i mean the comparison isn't really going to work very well because like i said this is wild rider but i really could see like dead end or something being repainted in this that that would be, honestly be my guess is what figure they're going to use to repaint it but i'm not 100 percent sure i mean that's not something that i have secret information on or anything of that nature but still a, a really good looking figure now the head you get a little bit more of an up and down motion because the pin is actually a little bit bigger so you get a nice range of motion with the head looks left and right these little pieces do kind of get in the way uh, if you leave them straight up and down like that not quite as much but when you bring them in you kind of get a problem with them running into uh, the tires so depending on how far you want to spread that out you can move that forward and back in and out but again moving it in and out you kind of get it bumping into the the wheels themselves he bends here at the elbow but as you can see this is very loose on mine uh it's kind of unfortunate but it's i mean not terrible but i mean you can see just how floppy it kind of is so that's a little unfortunate. Uh, he does have waist articulation, which comes in handy if you're going to have him as an arm. He moves forward and back here at the hips, in and out. They rotate at the upper part of the thigh, bends at the knee, nothing at the foot or anything like that. But overall, a, a really cool look for him. It's definitely different, you know, and it isn't what us G1 kind of fans think of when we think of the Stunticons. But I think it's a nice change. It adds to it and kind of expands on that whole mythos, I guess. Now, to go to his arm mode, it really is, uh, again, personal preference on how you want to do it. You can straighten this, bring this back. You can rotate the head if you want, although you can leave it like that, and you're really not going to see it. But let's just rotate it around just for the sake of it. Okay, bring that down. These, I mean, you can bring these pieces down, but, again, they're kind of going to get in the way. So your best bet would be to maybe rotate it up something along these lines just to kind of hide things right there along that kind of side I, I suppose it's again personal preference on how you want to set this up and then you can rotate this around you can bring the hand out bring out my little screwdriver bring this piece out bend this down and then we got this so uh, I'm bending it on this side so we're gonna put it there and uh, there you have off-road as a, a hand um, or arm uh, and again it, it, again it, it's really personal preference and how you set this all up uh, it kind of works best if you leave it like this but I mean you can set it out how, however you want to you got the rotation right there you got basically a double joint here for the elbow you got the swivel here that was his waist so all that articulation is there but again for me wild rider and by extension off-road here never were in an arm in, in my universe so keeping them as a hand and an arm is much better for me i think so rotating this all the way back around there you have them back in his robot mode a really solid figure different i i really feel that people are going to hate on him just because he's not wild rider but i think he's a very good figure just by himself and honestly if we do get a wild rider you know in terms of proper uh, wild rider i have no problem with having this guy just kind of hang out on the side and like being a sixth member of the stunticons or something like that that in case of an emergency would combine with him or something i guess I, it, it doesn't bug me i mean i think he's really that good now to transform them back we're going to angle all this down do this on this side as well I'm going to take these legs split them then accordion these back and up along that side do that on this side as well kind of tuck that right up on there bring all that together 
then you want to push all these arms in there and you want to do all that stuff before you actually bring this up because it's a little bit more complicated so once you get all that straightened up then you can bring this up lock that into place tab that on along the sides and then bring that down just like so and there you have uh, off-road back in his truck mode and honestly like i said i feel that the biggest downside against this is people are going to automatically compare this to a uh, wild rider and be upset that we didn't get a wild rider but I do like this. Now, Hasbro kind of has this thing where they make figures and they basically want to see how the many extra figures they can make beyond just the original intended figure. So if they always kind of intended this to eventually become Ironhide, it makes sense to see if they can spread them out and do something else. And hey, let's repaint them and make them a Stunticon. It's the same kind of thing with the Alpha Bravo and Blades. If they knew that they were going to have to make an Alpha Bravo based on the comic book, it makes sense that they could take that and say hey we can also use that as blades so you're maximizing the mold usage and from a business standpoint therefore maximizing the profit so it makes perfect sense to me and i really don't mind it, especially since i said by himself i think it's a really solid and cool looking figure vehicle mode really looks sharp i really dig the truck it kind of has this uh, off-road look and feel especially with a more heavy duty sort of the skid plate right here kind of looks like the hummer almost and then you know heavy duty wheels here i, I really dig it the transformation is very similar to basically the Stunticons and the aerial bots in the fact that the legs are very much like the aerial bots. And then the Stunticon aspect comes in, you know, with the, the front of the car kind of just folding back like that. It's very similar. So I like seeing that kind of cross use of engineering. And then robot mode, he looks good. Despite the fact that I really do get a, a Dreadwing kind of look and feel for him. I don't mind it. I think it looks pretty cool. But all in all, the guy is really very nice. And I, I really do think is a wonderful addition to the Stunticons. Now this and the rest of the Wave 2 figures are slowly trickling out to various retail places. So good luck and happy hunting. But if you can't find them, there's always Big Bad Toy Store. So all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description. You go to BBTS where you can pick this up and add it to your collection today. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optibotomous. Don't forget that you can keep in touch with me by liking my Facebook page at facebook.com slash teambotomous and by following me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash optibotomous. Also, I'd encourage you to check out my new website at optibotomousreviews.com where you can see all my videos from the previous week, see what I have coming up for future release, and also get your very own Optibotomous t-shirt. And finally, I'd also really appreciate it, guys, that if you like this review, don't forget to please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. Hey guys, you all go get some bacon?